So we want to continue on talking about polynomials. And today what we want to look at is the types and parts of polynomials so we can classify and identify various parts on there. This is part of outcome C1. So we've talked before about polynomials that had one term, two terms, three terms, or more terms. Well, we quite often have special names to talk about these. When we have only one term in a polynomial, such as 3x here, we call that a monomial. So monomial is a polynomial of one term. In the same way, when we have two terms, we make the phone ring while we're recording. So once the phone is dealt with, we can see that a binomial of two terms is called a binomial. Think of a bicycle, right, has two wheels. Well, a binomial has two terms. In the same way, a tricycle has three wheels, so a trinomial has three terms, such as this one here. 3x squared plus 3x plus 2 is a trinomial because it has one, two, three terms. And we can remember that a term is something that's divided by addition. So visually, it'll be something that's set apart by an addition or subtraction sign. The degree is another term that we need to know. So before we talk about the degree of a polynomial, we want to talk about the degree of a term. The degree of a term tells us how many variables are multiplied out in that term. So it's really easy when we only have a variable mentioned once, because all we have to do is look at the exponent of that variable. So in our variable of 3x to the fifth, we say, well, there's only one variable, the x, so it is of degree 5. So that is a degree 5 polynomial. Or sorry, a degree 5, well, it is a degree 5 polynomial because it's only a single term, but it's a degree 5 term. Let's look at this other example. Okay, so negative 2x to the fourth, y to the cube. We ask ourselves, how many variables are being multiplied here. Well, if we think about what this really means, it means minus 2 times x times x times x times x times y times y times y. If we were to write that all out. Well, how many variables are being multiplied there then? Well, we've got a constant. The negative 2 is not a variable, but we have an x, an x, an x, an x, a y, a y, and a y. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven variables being multiplied through. So that would be of degree seven. And the easier way, of course, to do that then, much like the power laws, you can actually add those two numbers there. And four plus three is seven. So this right here would be a degree seven term. And when we talk, want to talk about the degree of a polynomial, all we need to do is look at each of the terms. And whichever term has the highest degree, it sort of takes over. So the degree of the highest term is going to be the degree of the polynomial. So if I look at this term here, it is of degree 2. If I look at this term, it is of degree 3. And all I have to ask myself, which is bigger, 2 or 3? Obviously, 3 is bigger, so the degree of this polynomial is 3. So we'd say that's a polynomial of degree 2. The last thing we want to look at is identifying the parts within a polynomial. And we have four terms, no pun intended, that we want to look at here. So uh, the first one we want to look at is the coefficient. Okay, the coefficient is the numerical factor of a term. 
That's the fancy way of saying the number that comes in front of a variable. So in this monomial of 3x, the coefficient, sometimes called the numerical coefficient, is 3. And the 2x squared, the numerical coefficient is 2. Okay? And so on and so forth. In front of the 5x, that 5 is a numerical coefficient. It gets a little tricky when we look at the x cubed here because we ask ourselves, well, what is the number in front of the x cubed? It's our invisible friend 1. Okay, so 1 is the numerical coefficient because That's how many x squareds we have, is 1. So the next term we want to look at is variable. We're already probably familiar with what the variable is. Here it's x. Here it's x. Here it's x. Here it's x. Of course, it doesn't always have to be x. It could be y. It could be p could be any letter to represent a variable. In these examples, it's all x. The constant in a polynomial is a number that does not change in an expression or an equation. So this means not a number that's being multiplied by the variable, because that would be a coefficient. This means a number that's just a term that's just a number on its own. So. Most of these have a constant of zero because they're, they only have a coefficient. They don't have any number that stands alone. The only one that actually has a constant is this one here. And the constant is negative 3. Not positive 3, but negative 3. Because remember, we always want to think of that negative sign as being attached there. So we're adding a negative 3 to that. So negative 3 is our constant there, and the number that stands alone. The last part is the exponent, which is a term that you should already be familiar with. Okay, It is what power are you bringing the variable. Now the only thing we need to mention there is what about a case like this question? Well, x does have uh, an exponent. It's just, again, our invisible friend, 1. Okay. And the same thing here. And so we would say that our exponent there, in that case, is 1. So those are the parts of a polynomial that should help you identify them. And now we just need to practice that skill.